<laughs> Today, I test motorbikes at Suzuki's warehouse. That's gravel. I handle it pretty well. Almost came off. The highlight of a three-day trip from Mindoro to Subic. Coast roads built amongst previously impenetrable cliffs. Caves where revolutionaries met a century ago. Lakes with volcanoes and towns with volcanoes. 500 kilometers of new discoveries. It was on your shoulder, can you do that again? I sure can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe heavy weight. <laughs> <laughs> David wants to explore supply and more and I am gonna keep on going because my schedule has suddenly changed and I have one week less than I thought I did so I need to start heading a bit quicker there but still manageable still manageable distances so we're gonna be all right yeah. everything's gonna be all right yep, yep. tonight yep, I'm yeah I'm gonna get on the road and disappear yeah. and see you we meet again that one bye 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 a little bit more green this time of year, but it's always beautiful to be heading well. You think towards the mountains, but we're going alongside them. I remember this bridge entering the next town, Santa Cruz. Everything's just so much greener now. I remember the community. I remember the guy we parked there. I can't park there this time. <laughs> His pal eye in the way. Remember the guy we met from that community? Nice, nice guy. I remember this part, I remember this mountain was orange in March. But change is the spice of life, so let's go somewhere new. Oh, oh. Wow, Luwag? Luwag! <laughs> oh, oh. Sa ano, sa ilo-ilo nang adjustan. Ah, sa blayan lang kanina, pero ano, sa... Sa kadabaw ko. Layo, tapau, oh oh. Ini mai suyo, kita yang layu betul. Ah, segi segi. Bata, para banyak jas nanti. Oh oh. Hahaha, bigat. Hahaha. Sikit kilo sahun lima ngat. Hahaha. Oh, ah kaya. Yes. Eight years nadi sto. Oh, tagal na. Eh, mas mama nong kau magano besaya. Mm -mm. Mas mama nung Bisaya Baka may asawa kang Bisaya Oo, oh, meron <laughs> Oo oh, Ganyan oh. Filipino friendly Oo oh. So the port going off Going back to Batangas Is to the right But I'm gonna go to the left Towards Palwan Which is a corner of the island I've never been to Ah Ah, here we are, Paluan. This looks like the forest reserve of, I believe, Mount Carabite. These bridges are interesting. <laughs> the road's concrete all the way, but the bridges and their approaches aren't. Paluan itself is a quiet laid-back town. But I wanted to go along the road a bit further. Just to see, let's see what there is. I'm intrigued. Truly a beautiful coastal road as well. Coming out here all the way along. However, I looked at the map, it doesn't really lead anywhere. There's a few communities there, but it's nice to see this side of Mindoro. But today was one of those days when I just wasn't feeling so great. So I took in the beautiful landscapes, but headed straight towards the port at Abra de Elog. They said, I like yellow, I like yellow. <laughs> yellow, yellow, yellow. Oh, yellow lad. Yellow. Happy brief, yellow. Brief? Ah, it's Tom. It's Tom. Hi, oh, okay, so I booked on 5 pm. 5 pm, so in a couple of hours. So I'll go into the port in about an hour. So let's have a look down the road a little bit. That's the port there. 
they told me this road does actually go all the way to Puerto Galera. You're going in the port? Okay. Uh, this road does go all the way to Puerto Galera. It does. There's still one difficult river crossing there. And it's raining, so never mind. But let's go and have a look. Let's have a look down here because this is like the cliff front area. So I guess this here is a Mangan village as well. They do, they have their own form. Oh, is that Mangan or is that... I don't know if it is Mangan because I noticed the, the people are kind of a bit darker and the houses look a bit more like the uh, Aitas or the Dumagats. Aye. Road closed. No entry road closed. Okay, so from here it continues. You can see there's pickups going there. There's vehicles that go there. I kind of wish I'd gone to Calapan now. <laughs> but it's already getting late in the day. So I wanted to get on a boat. No, oh, big bikers. The yellow boat is coming in. And I hope that's the one anyway. Yes, Rural Master. And that's a nice looking storm off there. I hope we're not heading for that. Or that's not heading for us. You know, I got the ticket. Then I realised I wish I'd done that road to Puerto Galera. But there we are. That's always the way. Hey, Chief. Oh, now the rain's coming down just as I get on the boat. Could be worse. Leaving Mindoro behind. Passing these huge cliffs on one side. That storm was definitely rolling in somewhere. Okay, gonna join the scrum to get off the boat. And then once I get out, today I'm just gonna head slightly down the road to Lipa. It's been, a, it's been a couple of days in Mindoro. I really hope to spend about two or three times as long as that, but I really, really have to make it up to Clark Airport to get a flight down to Davao earlier than I thought, but that's life. So, sorry if I'm not with it. I'm focused on something else at the moment that I need to really, really focus on, but I'm doing what I can. That's all I'm gonna say for now, so. Yeah, I'm going to order some food and then until tomorrow. Good morning from Lipa City here in Batangas. I came here last night. I got absolutely soaked. The issue is there is a typhoon moving in, which is just my luck. <laughs> oh, okay. That bit's just going to push through. I really don't know where this bit of rain's heading. I've got to track it and monitor it with my... Well, I'm just going to look at it and see if it's... <laughs> so, we're going to head down the road now today. I'm not going to go... Probably not going to go all the way today because I'm probably going to have to rest from the rain. Probably going to have to hide from the rain. Shelter. All I'm going to do is head north. See what happens along the way. Under the big, big, big piece of clouds, I'm going to turn left and go towards the Ta'al Lake. Just want to have a look at that this morning. Oh, okay. There's an enforcer there. <laughs> Hello, lions. Just a peak for today, but a very satisfying peak. Live Lake Ta'al Terapia, 130 a kilo. Not bad, huh? Oh, it's a bit of drizzle this morning, so now I'm heading up this road here from the lake. Just around the back. I think we're going to come out somewhere near New Valley. Salamat po. Oui. Nice potholes there. Google Maps strikes again, sending me down roads that don't exist. The road that it's telling me to go down simply does not exist. It's a motocross track. So I've just come and taken an alternative road and look what I found. Even 
on a six lane highway. Hello. <laughs> Why are you here? What are you doing? <laughs> Hello. Oh, and a cat. Either way, it's in the right direction. I don't even know if I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm allowed, okay. Sometimes the distinction between private and public is blurry. So, running. Uh, 10 pesos, 10 pesos, okay. Ah, uh, 250, 250, oh, oh, thank you, Paul. I have to pay to go on this road. So, right now, I'm in some sort of industrial park. And there's lots of big warehouses and so on. Not concrete. This part's kind of leafy. Behind the trees, I see it. I see it, I see it. It's there. Look at all those cars. Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in there. It's the place. Like your, your Hi. house. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Suzuki. <laughs> oh, speaking of, this is his, this is his record. Yeah. This man, this man, this man. This man does all the road safety. <laughs> and then I disobey it. <laughs> all us now. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's not. I'm a beast, Robert. <laughs> but I've been invited to try out their new Gixo 155, which is more of a sports bike. The mirrors are here, a bit further down. It's a different style, but you can see it's kind of like the V-Strom with the seats. Very, very comfortable seats, actually. This is a 155cc, so they've taken the 250, made it a little bit smaller. It's got a lot of good amount of power for a 155. I love this exhaust. These chains here, they're thick, they're heavy duty. Very similar to what I have on the V-Strom. Dual disc brakes. So apart from it being a smaller engine, apart from that, it's very, very similar. Let's give it the most difficult challenge yet, which is going over a speed bump. Does it ground? No. Actually, it's got a bit more height than I thought. Bit of rough roading. Ah, handles pretty well. Because this is from the same line as the V-Strom, actually. I'm still trying to get used to this position. I can see they've tested some cars here. Skidding. The banking, bankers. Yeah, this, okay, this, this grind's a bit slippery, but I can tell it's, it reminds me a lot of the V-Strom. You feel like you feel a, a slight slide, but it regains it very, very quickly. Same, same kind of thing. So this one, I thought when I saw it, I thought I'm going to have to bend down here because I actually have a, a large, larger torso, especially. But actually, you see this position? It's pretty natural. It's pretty good going sports bike and it handles the slides. I mean, I hit a couple of things here. I hit a couple of rocks. I went sliding a little bit, but you know, it's, it's like what I'm used to with the V-Strom, it corrects itself very quickly. You know, that little slide and it just, it knows. It knows, these, uh, these Suzuki's really know. I'm always looking down at my handlebars, just like, yep, these two and this one, and these ones, yeah. Oh, there we go. These buttons, oh, I like these buttons. They're comfortable. Maybe I can set the time. Is it 12.40? Is it the same? Yes, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same as on the V-Strom. So it's very, um, yeah, intuitive. Okay, this is the naked version. But don't ride naked. <laughs> Dart. Don't ride motorbikes naked. Very, very dart. Oh, okay. I kind of like this. I, I kind of like this because it doesn't have too much at the front. There's not too much weight at the front. Oh, I like how that goes. It just feels more... Like it has more flexibility on it. Oh, that's kind of nice. That's gravel. It handled it pretty well. Almost came off. So finally, let's try the original 250cc version. So this one has the same engine as the V-Strom, but both tires are 17s. So it's kind of the same. The V-Strom was based off this setup. So let's give it a go. Let's give that a go as well. Oh, it's got, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's just like the V-Strom. It's, it's got that extra bit of kick when you start up, no? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a V-Strom engine, that's for sure. And, oh, the way it banks, yes! Woo! Oh, it's just, it's just like the V-Strom. 
<laughs> oh, I love that. Very slippery at this end, but handles it totally fine. Oh, man. Yeah, this just feels natural for me now because I'm so used to the 250. Boom, avoid that. Yeah. I like the cameraman moves as well. This is really, it's very intuitive. And again, the position is just, it's there. It's not far, there. It's, I mean, the V-Storm I think is up here. So this is, it's not bad, huh? It's just, it's going to provide distance. It's made proportionally. And I like the suspension. I might try this out on the, on the gravel there. Just give it a bit on there. Oh, that's, that handles really nicely, actually. It handles almost like the V-Storm. I'm sure if I was to put some ah uh, some mud tires on it, I'm sure it would handle like it actually it handles very similarly, yeah. It's got that it's just the setup's right. Let's do something ah <laughs> dart <laughs> Yeah, okay. The tires the tires have a bit of slip, but the suspension is fantastic. I've gone too far, haven't I? Huh. Not bad for road bikes. I found out they really are strict on the stops here. So you really have to stop for one, two, three. And I didn't even look in that time because I was counting. And it's nice to be back on here. This is still my favorite riding position of all. It's the most natural for my torso size and for, for what I do, I love the adventure side of motorbike. Everyone's different. Amongst the calm roads of Nuvali, we had some great Japanese food to prepare me for the afternoon. Awesome Japanese food, and before I got on the road again, some very, very dark ice cream. Never tried this before. Oh, it's got hot, hot, hot fudge, hot chocolate thing. That flavour was unexpected. It's really yogurty. It's very, very good. Seems healthy, I hope. Now, I was being eased back into metro traffic. The only thing that's going to hold me up here is all the traffic lights. Thirty seconds, twenty, thirty seconds every kilometre at every set of lights adds up very quickly. Twenty kilometres took a very long time. One and a half hours later, I see it in the distance. One more jeepney bumper to avoid. Oh, it's stressful. I'm so happy just to be underneath this expressway now. We're going to be on the service road, not on the expressway itself. But at least now it's kind of, you don't have jeepneys stopping everywhere, you don't have people crossing, you don't have turnings, you don't have establishments. Too much, too much. I've just got to follow the other motorbikes wherever they go oh, Manila yes Manila because I don't know where on earth the service road goes it's got to make sure I stay away from those ETCs because that's the toll way <laughs> that stick looks effective <laughs> Yay! you see I can drive faster than expressway traffic on the service road <laughs> Honestly though, most of driving down here is like this, it's pretty stressful. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, we're off the service road, we're off the Manila South Road. We're going towards C6. Oh, good, okay, here we are. Lake Laguna Highway. I believe those are massive sluice gates. Control the floods. And the reward for reaching Antipolo after two and a half hours of pain? Awesome Mexican food this time.
day three is the final leg, avoiding central Manila as much as possible. But yeah, there's still traffic. Isn't it a nice feeling riding on one, two, three, four, five, six, six lanes of empty road? That's the Bata, oh, that's the House of Representatives. Oh, okay, it's in QC. I had no idea. There we are. I've learned something new today. The MRT7 is still under construction, but we're going to follow its route all the way to San Jose del Monte in Bulacan. Big day. Okay, the main road goes to the left, but I'm going to go up this way because there's something historic that I'm interested in having a look at. Somewhere down here is... <laughs> oh. Nice old house. Okay. No cave guides, no entry. Okay, I don't know how this works. So, oh, let me see if anyone's here. I know you're in a cueva. Oh, uh, cave, uh, uh. Ah? Ah? A viewing lang, ah, a viewing lang. For a while, I wondered where Google Maps was sending me. But it makes sense that a cave is hidden away, especially given the history of this place. Testing out my Tagalog right now. But this, during 1896, 1897, the dying days of the Spanish regime here. The Spanish colonial days were dying off just before they sell, sold it to the USA. And of course, what followed in there, Aguinaldo and Del Pilar and other members of the KKK, not the American KKK, the Katipunan, and I've forgotten the rest of the letters of it, but the revolutionaries who would go on to form the first Philippine Republic and would continue to fight against the Americans and the Japanese later, they met here in this cave. I'm not going to go inside because it's illegal, but I heard it's 700 meters deep. I don't have a guide, so I'm just going to show you from the outside. Somewhere deep inside here, that's where the revolutionaries would have met back then. Bulacan has a bit of history when it comes to kind of the revolutionary ideals back in the day. That's very, very cool, just on the side of a hill. And from the rotunda, let's continue this way. Is that a Christmas tree? These cows are in a trailer towed by a Willy's Jeep. That's pretty cool. Oh wow. We just entered Angat and you can see... This is the only issue, but we're almost out to Ballywag. Aye. And in Ballywag, history's everywhere you look. It's a very impressive old house. But there's one old house that I'm particularly interested in visiting here. I don't know, this is interesting. Ponzi. He died in Hong Kong, actually, but he was born here in Ballywag. So, let's have a look at his house. Mariano Ponzi is a propagandista, diplomat, reformist. Nagamot at Mananulat, my Tagalog is short, and I don't know what those words mean, but he's actually a very, very important guy in the history early on. So, Del Pilar, I mentioned earlier, and then Rizal. Those two are very, very important as well. But Ponce himself, he used to go around the Asian world. He met, well, for the first leader of the Chinese Republic. So in that sense, so they all agreed in self-rule. That was where he got his ideas, by meeting these other leaders across Asia, who also believed in self-rule. So, and then there was also this kind of collective Asian spirit that he really, really came to uphold later on. It was a time where empires were starting to crumble. 
and it was a time where self rule was starting. But he was kind of before his time because it was really after World War II that decolonization really, really happened. But the movement, the self rule started there. So it's it's cool, cool to see. And I love these stained windows, by the way. So linked to that revolution I spoke about earlier, which was planned inside that cave. 1896, he was arrested, but he managed to escape. And he went to Hong Kong. He came back from exile then in 1907, during the American era, and was chosen to represent Wulakan, 1910 to 1912. He then went back to Hong Kong and passed away soon after. So he really was very internationally traveled. Once called the most beautiful basilica in the Philippines, and I can see why. The brickwork, beautiful, eh? And now I've been caught up in a funeral procession. Mm. That's a bit of course. Yeah. Which draws an end to our journey through Bulacan. Welcome to Pampanga, and that's a lot of carton. Criminology students breaking the law. All right, and acting like a biker gang. In the distance, Mount Arayat. I came to Arayat because I was interested in the mountain. It just kind of sits up there on the plains. There's nothing else but that mountain and plains. And Arayat itself is a big town, actually. It's a really big place. But I couldn't figure out what to do so it's three three o'clock i'm gonna go towards i'm actually flying out of clark because it's going to be a good staging point for my next adventures come november so i'm gonna head down towards that way now so i can escape any possible rains that come Welcome to Bataan! Welcome to Hermosa. Oh, Hermosa. I'm in Bataan. I've never been to Bataan before. <laughs> and it's my third to last province. I've, I don't know how I've never been to Bataan before. But, but here I am. And I only have two provinces left now. Bataan, of course, very important. A fitting final stretch. But I won't stay in Bataan long today. On the other side of this pass is already Zambales. I'll explore this area in the next vlog. You'll really notice some differences. Something I do notice too is that most of the Freeport zone is actually forest. It's not very built up. And even the homes are kind of separated apart the speed bumps don't kill you gobstopper what a name 